everybody uh, welcome to hey man i'm josh i'm jacob hey man hey man how you doing good yeah oh yeah i just uh kind of rolled out of bed got no hat walked out with my pit vipers this morning let's see the pit vipers on i think i like them i like how they're called pit vipers i wonder why they are oh because it says pit viper right across the top now i will tell you i don't know if they're supposed to be that smudged but they I, that's like all smudgy dudgy yep yeah, yeah, is it? They're, they're really hard to clean and are like, like even when I wipe them down, the minute I take them off or put them back on, they're all back. Off. Maybe you shouldn't take them down with your fingers on the lens. Well, I try to right here, but sometimes I get caught. Like right now with the headphones, I might yeah. like adjust them a little bit. So like, yeah, I got to tell you something, dude. And this is the truth. I, I, and I don't know if it's your age or just how cool I think you are, but it's like, if I put those on, I would look like the biggest, giantest douche. I disagree. But you just look cool, man. I think you look cool in everything. Why don't you try these on? Okay. I'm gonna do you smudge them? Oh things? no! Don't, and you can put mine on. Hold on. Let's re, let's let's do the old Freaky Friday. Whoa! What if we did Freaky Friday and you were me and I was you? That would be terrible. Would it? Wouldn't it? I mean, you I can't even put these on all the way. Why not? I'm getting stuck on that. You hand. legit look like a cult leader with those on. Yeah. <laughs> You legit look. <laughs> you you look like you're gonna get some people into some white Nikes and have them drink some juice and just lay down for a little while. You I, I do drugs with a friend. I look for sure like the white trashiest white trash. See, you look cool with these. You don't. No, dude. I look like I I ch I'm changing tires for Ricky Bobby. Hey, not a terrible one. No, no, I'm with you. Um, those were still, I just cleaned them off. They were still terribly smudged. Yeah, I, I, oh, these are clean. Look at that. Anyways, man. Hey, hey, hey. First of all, I want to say once again, thank you to everybody uh, who came out to the shows this week in Vegas. Unbelievable. Who were at the Monday night residency. That show is heating up every week. We had some great comics drop in last night, but every Monday night here in Vegas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to tell you something right now, dude. Ready? Yep. I don't know about you, but I, the off the road, I feel like a new person. This break has re energized me in a way that, I, and I feel healthy and I feel alive and I feel awake and I feel ready to fucking go. I, I, I don't know about you, but like I, I needed this break and we have another week. I know. Oh I've, my I've, God. I've been sleeping a ton. Aren't we going to LA tomorrow though? Going to LA tomorrow, do some podcasts over there. And I'm going to shoot a sketch on Friday. Nice. Um, uh, but, but like we have another week you've been sleeping. I actually have been this fucking, okay guys, it's like 197 degrees. It's so hot. So I get up at 5 AM to walk Indiana Jones. Right. I will tell you, getting up at 5 a.m. when you perform at night, it really fucks up my sleep schedule. So I come home, I eat, I... Dude, I've been... Listen, I've been meditating every day like a nerd. You've been taking a midday nap like an old man? Yep. Nope. For sure. Oh, yeah. One hand in my pants, one behind my head like this. Straight Al Bundy. I don't know why when you get older... I don't know why when you get older... There's a hand in the pants. I don't know if it's you're just checking to make sure everything's still there, or I don't know why. But as I've gotten older, one hand in the pants, no movement, just a hand in the pants. That that's that's I think that's just a guy thing. Do you go hand in the pants when you nap? Oh yeah, I go hand in the pants just when I'm laying down on the couch. Yeah, it's so weird. You don't see women don't cup their vaginas when they're laying down. Nope. But dudes cup the, it's like they cup. It's like, and now, a, it's like a security pouch. Yeah. I mean, for me to get dick and balls, I got to go two hands. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but. <laughs> Relax. But, but why do you think it is that dudes, is it, you think it's like, a, I don't, it's so interesting, but we do cradle and cup as a, as a form of just. I don't know if it relaxes us or if it soothes. It's like a comfort like, or a safety thing. It's usually warm down there. Yeah, but I could put it under my underarms. That's warm. That's this is weird. This is I guess it just feels more natural because like it's like if I can't have my hands my hands up here when I'm just chilling. That does not doesn't feel like comfortable and whatnot. Do you so know what? Okay, my hands are usually down, so they're just you know there. 
Can, okay, let's let's. Okay, is there anything you would say that you think is a little bizarre that helps you get to sleep that you don't think it it does for other people? No, I have two. Oh, jeez. Okay, one. If I really want to go to sleep, if you ever see me in the hotel room, and guys, we share a hotel room. Uh, but if I really want to go to sleep, I'll put my finger right here, and I'll put I'll put some pressure on it. If it, or sometimes I do it. Not at the hotel because it's gross, but at home, like with just with a remote control, but right here, relax, dude. I sleep so much better with my glasses on. Just the pressure right here, even right now, it's relaxing. It's so weird. So, so yeah, when I meditate, I make sure I meditate with my reading glasses on because they're heavier than these, and it just relaxes. I don't understand oh, why. That is weird. Not only that, this. No. Nope. This thumb. Under, it's like half peck, half underarm. But if you see me sometimes, and, and you'll see, now, now that I'm saying it, you'll you'll take a look. But sometimes that thumb under the, it's like a half titty, half underarm, like an under titty. Well, that's under titty. Yeah. But like. It's a literal under titty, actually. Do you remember when women's fashion for a minute there, they were trying to bring the under titty in? No. What? Oh, oh like we're like, we're, it would like. Yeah, the top was being shown, but the under titty yeah, was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still kind of, they're still kind of trying. I, I, I don't know why I think there's such a huge difference between under titty and upper titty. And side titty. Side titty. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a huge difference. Under titty doesn't really grab my attention. Under, I'm the opposite. Under titty because I didn't, I've seen upper titty like cleavage forever. So under titty just feels a little more dangerous. No, no, I don't think so. I think side side titty maybe, but under titty, I don't know. It just seems side titty. If I see side titty, I feel dirty looking at it. I feel like I'm peeping. And I don't, I, side titty makes me feel dirty. I don't know why, dude. It's from the sides, and then the side implies I'm sneaking something in. You know, <laughs> but but <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I also I mean yeah. Anyways, good talk about titties with my <laughs> father. Jesus. Titty talk with Josh and Jacob? No, thanks. <laughs> no fucking thank you. <laughs> Come on, that's going to be our next podcast. I hope not. <laughs> I will do anything for it to not be our next podcast. <laughs> next, let's talk about what kind of porn we each like. Uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, no that's going to gross me out. Yeah, there are some lines I think we got to keep. We have, we have definitive lines. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we do have definitive lines. That's one of them. That's mainly anything that's sexual. In, yes, everything else is pretty much yep on the table for discussion. Yep, I agree with that. I, I, I what what can you think of? Oh, I'm so excited that to hear this. Oh God. Can you think of what what you would consider the most uncomfortable conversation you and I have ever had? I'll give you a second to think about that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I was trying to think. My parents and I never had those kind. We never had like the sex talk or any uncomfortable. I think the most uncomfortable conversation I ever had with my dad, I was um, wearing, you know, parachute pants. And they had big pockets and I had a bag of weed in the pocket and I was going to hang out with my buddy, John Sutton, who doesn't listen to this, but if he does, what's up, John? <laughs> uh, and, um, on the, and I was supposed to bring the weed. Now I would, I had been buying weed. I told you this, right? The dude I used to buy weed from was a guy named Billy Harrison. Billy, what's up? Uh, statue of limitations, dude. You're okay. And so I, and, I mean, who knows? You might not be. He, he, Anyways, depending on what he's doing now. So I used to work when I was 13. I got my first job. I was washing dishes in the kitchen. Back then, employers didn't really care if you were underage. They would pay you under the table. It was cheaper for them. And um, we were, <laughs> here's the deal. There weren't as many um, people that they could pay under the table, illegal immigrants or whatever. So we were the illegal immigrants that they but paid you, under the table. But you were legal we were legal, but they paid us illegal. Underage, okay, yeah. So I washed dishes, and this dude, Billy Harrison, used to come into the kitchen. This is the dude who used to sell me the bag of seeds. Oh. Because, guys, yeah, he, 
Yeah. Okay. I went when I, he sold me a couple bags. I was like, what are these seeds? And he go, and he, he could just smell a dummy. He goes, wait, I didn't, you, you don't know about the seeds. And I said, no. And he goes, well, if I, if you want more seeds, I'll get you more seeds. Cause then I'm really just, that's how I grow my weed from the seeds, but I'll, I like you. So I'll pack them with seeds. You're just going to get less weed. And I was like, fucking deal. Idiots. So- <laughs> it's like a drug dealer selling a guy oregano for the first time. Dude, died. I had a drawer filled with seeds that I showed my older brother. I'm like, I'm going to be rich. He was like, you are the dumbest fucking person. Because also, where what are you doing with them? Yeah, it's not like I could grow them in the backyard with my mom. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't going to be like next to her rhubarb. She was going to be like, what's this? Oh, this is just my plant. Anyways, what was I talking about? Uh, bringing the weed in these parachute pants. Oh, okay. So Billy Harrison sells me a bag of weed. And uh, it's so funny, too. Can I tell you a memory that just came back from this place? I think it was the gas light or the gas lamp. Yeah, it was the gas light diner. And um, the guy, there was a guy who was on my dad's, my, my older brother's baseball team, a guy named Jimmy Farr. And um, he had this girl that he worked, his girlfriend, he worked as a waitress and he ran the diner. And so after breakfast, in between lunch and breakfast rush, he and the waitress would go downstairs and I never knew why I was, you know, and he was like, just watch up here. You know, if somebody comes in, you know how to do it. Right. But they would go downstairs and fuck every day after breakfast. Yeah. In the storage room. Yeah. 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 I, I found that out once by accident. Um, anyways. Yeah. So I'm in the car. My dad. Sorry, everybody. A D D D D D D D D. Yeah. By the way, if you ever wondered how our brains work on a regular basis, that was a perfect example. Yeah, of it. I just went through four stories before I get to the story I wanted to, and I didn't even remember the story I was originally telling. Do you need me to remind you again? No, I got it. Okay. I'm in the back of the car in my parachute pants, big pockets. Weed falls out. I'm I'm bummed, but lucky for me, John Sutton has some weed. We smoke weed. We come home. I'm drunk. Like you know, we drink a little bit. We each bring booze that we stole from our parents' cabinets, and and um. I come home and grandpa is at the dining room table. And when I, at my house where I grew up in, when you walked up, we would walk through a sliding glass door, which walked right into the dining room. Right. And we, I walked in and he had the bag of weed in front of him. And I was pretty nervous. And he said, do you want to talk about this? And I was trying to diffuse it with humor. And I said, I wish you had told me you smoked weed. <laughs> it was like, we could have hung out. That didn't, he didn't think that was funny. No, he didn't. Nope. Um, he dumped the weed and I was obviously grounded for probably not as long as you were grounded. For the, I was grounded a whole summer. Yep. You were grounded a whole summer. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, yeah. That was maybe the most uncomfortable conversation. Can you think of the most uncomfortable? I mean, probably somewhere in that era for you and me. About like you catching me stealing your edibles, probably. Yeah, but you were so high when you were talking about it. The next day, though, probably yeah. was like you know the guilt factor set in. You remember that? Yeah. Um, it was probably that, but I don't really think like there's not really uncomfortable conversations that we have. I try to make sure that, like, as we talk about everything, I make sure not to bring up things that would make me uncomfortable. Like, what would make you uncomfortable? Anything sexual. Yeah, me too. I don't feel more comfortable. I, don't, I it's not like. I'm super comfortable talking to mom about it, but for some reason I'm talking to, not about you guys, yeah. but about, you know. Oh, you're more comfortable talking to your mom about sexual stuff than you are me. Yeah, because you can't take anything seriously. So true. you just make jokes about it. True, 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 true. And smart because it would slip out on stage and you don't want anything. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a wise move. That's why yeah. I pick and choose what I tell you. Yeah, dude. But if you told me something and we're like, hey, you've told me some things and you're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, nobody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't give me the nobody knows. I mean, that was probably pretty uncomfortable for me. That one we're talking about yeah, 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 that yeah. we won't talk about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely uncomfortable for both of us. Yeah. Not, I, I'd probably, I'd, I'll click that one. Yeah. By the way, that wasn't uncomfortable for me. It, it was, yeah. Uncomfortable anyway, is not the right word. We should stop talking about it because we're not going to tell them what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anyways, everybody. A couple other things I want to run past you. Uh, we are in Fort Wayne, Indiana in a couple of weeks. Well, that'll be next week. No, that'll be this week when this comes, comes out. out. Yeah. Yep. 
with Lee Syatt, which I'm really su- super excited about. I sent you a text about that. I'm paying you anyways. Oh, okay. no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Lee Syatt. And um, we're taking a couple more weeks off after that. Uh, taking a few weeks off in August. I just need to recharge the batteries. But in September, we are coming out firing, firing, firing. And I'm going to wait till September maybe to release my special is, I think, the move. Yeah, that was uh, because originally you were going to release it in March and then May. And then I... I, Okay. I want it to be different. And I was trying to figure out the best way to make it different. And I'm in no rush. Do you know what I mean? I'm in no, I'm in no rush. I, I, yeah. So I will tell you for the first time in a little bit, I'm a little stuck on new stories or, or finding new stories. Okay. And now I, I, but I shouldn't put so much pressure on myself because I have an hour and a half of material or so that I'm working through. Yeah. I just want to have that next hour ready when I'm done with this one. Yeah. But when you're done with this one, whenever that is going to be, you're going to have the other story. I feel like I'm almost done with this one right now. Really? It's pretty good. The hour that I'm doing oh, it. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. But it's interesting that, that the story that I thought was going to be my closer isn't going to be the closer. Be interesting. Anyways, dude. Um, how are you feeling? What's going on with you? Not good. Uh, my stomach's a little jacked. Yeah. Uh, teetering on a line right now. Are you, if you laugh too hard, will you, will something come out of your butthole? I think it's, I think it will, it was one way, but I feel like it could go another way. That's why you could throw up. Yeah. That's why I'm teetering on a line. You're in between throw up and poop. Yeah. It's more on the throw up edge right now though. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you want me to do most of the talking? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, not gonna lie, when I when I just burped earlier, it was not. It was like it's usually burps are good. That one was dodgy. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you hate when you burp and then you're like, I don't remember eating that. Yeah, you're like, why does that taste that. like tomato sauce? I probably shouldn't say that to me, right? Okay, now. got it, got it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. So I don't know. I'm feeling a little dodgy right now. Um, are you sweaty, clammy? No, I'm not. I'm 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 all right right now. Um, but you know, I'll I'll keep you updated. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah. Guys, can I tell you, by the way, so we had over July 4th, which was spectacular here. Have we talked since July 4th? We haven't. We, see, uh, we, the, guys, as Jacob and Iman, his girlfriend, were leaving our house, this dragonfly flew into our house. That was bigger than a hummingbird. Oh, dude, it was giant. It was like two hummingbirds. It was so a, a dinosaur. Yeah, it was so big uh, that I was going to have to kill it with something heavy. Now, s- since, by the way, did you know this? Since I posted the picture, because I woke up and it was dead. It was tits up on the ground. Yeah. Um, but since I posted, people were like, oh, you don't kill dragonflies. They're good luck. That's true. What? Yeah. I've never killed a dragonfly before. There's no reason to kill a dragonfly. They're, they're harmless. They're not after me. But dude, when you zoom in on the face of a dragon, have you ever zoomed, got a close-up view of an ant's face? The like the micro view of the ant's face? Diabolical. Really scary. A straight up demon. Devil. The dragonfly looked like either like an old Jew or a bulldog. Like a French bulldog. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying old Jews look like French bulldogs. I thought it was, I thought it was more like an English bulldog. Yeah, yeah, English bulldog. I mean, because I, I I'm get, I'm bumping up on being an old Jew. So I don't think I look like a dragon. Say bumping up. Do you think I'm a long way away from it? Eh, whatever floats your boat. You know what I think about Jews? Hey, let me tell you. Wow. By the way, <laughs> crazy way to start a sentence. <laughs> Jew or not, that is a great, as an absolutely wild way to start a sentence. Let me tell you something about Jews, and I feel the same way about Asians. Okay. <laughs> By the way, you, how did you make that start of that sentence even crazier? Like, well, listen, you, he said you're part you Asian, so I feel like I can say whatever I want. Yeah, but you're not. Yeah, but I know you, and you are. I, that is not how that fucking works yeah, okay. at all. Kinda. So I, think, I actually also am at a point in my life where I know who I am. I know what my intent is, and I and I'm not gonna let anyone dictate to me what I can and can't fucking talk about or joke about. I'll never say something offensive. And if you are offended by what I say, I would say it's your choice. No, a hundred percent. And I am not trying to tell you what to say. I just thought it was a 
fucking wild way to start a sentence. So let me tell you about the Jews. So, and, and the Asians. There you go. Okay. Don't just leave me out here again. Listen, I feel like we age the same way. And I'll tell you why. Because Jews look good until one day they don't. It's like their face goes, and everybody turns into Mel Brooks, right? Bummer. I say the same thing about Asians. Do you, yo, Asian dudes are young, 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 and they wake up one morning and you're like, are you Mr. Miyagi? Like it happens like fucking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I think other people's age a little more gradually, but I feel like the Asians and the Jews kind of go, hey, we look good. Holy fuck, we don't. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So you're a combination of both. So you're going to get like a little. It's going to be good for a little longer and then worse all at the same time. Well, listen, I, I will tell you the combination of Asian Jew has done wonders for your hair. Yeah. Good yeah, hair. You didn't get the the real curly Jewies. Oh, I did. You did? Oh, when my hair is long, dude. So I like when my hair is long, I throw my hair up in like a towel wrap. You yeah. Know? Oh, I've seen you come out like you're at, you know, like, like, like I'm at a day spa. <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> you, ta I know you tease me about using 74 towels, but when you towel up your hair like that, I'm like, look at this. I gotta, sometimes the hair's too long. I got to towel it up. I got no shame in that one. Man, when my hair was long, I mean, you know, I used to have hair in the mid, mid back. When my hair was long, when it was wet, I honestly would sit. <laughs> uh, this is embarrassing. When my hair was, okay. When my hair was that long, I was younger. I was kind of jacked and in, in about 185 pounds, so about 20 pounds heavier than I am now, but just jacked. And I would come out of the shower with the hair wet and I would do, this is embarrassing. I would do macho man impersonations in the mirror oh, with Jesus. my shirt off because I had like, I felt like a wrestler with the hair, you know, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'd mix them up. You know, I'd start my own character and I would, I would do, <laughs> I would do, what are those called when they do reads to the camera? I would cut promos in the mirror just as a wrestler. What the, was your, what was your name? The Wolf. Uh, Ow. Come with the pack, brother. You want to, you don't want to mess with the pack, brother. Yeah, we eat. Tonight we feast. Yeah, dude, the Wolf was fucking, are you kidding me? I, I wonder, I wish it, listen, if I had had a cell phone back then, I'd have recorded every one. Oh, I know. Every single one. of them. I'm not going to lie. Like I am kind of bummed that it took a, like that you didn't like that cell phones and videos and shit, like main, like handheld. Yeah. Wasn't when you grew up because I would love to have seen the shit you did as a kid. Oh, dude. Like the, the shit you did in college. Cause I know for sure you would have been the dude just like. You would have been like, not the dudes on Vine, but like just making dumb videos. But here's what I would say. You know, when you, we had that conversation, I think it was last week or the week before about who was wilder. We didn't have the cameras. Right. So there was no fear. There was no inhibition and people just did shit. And especially in public at bars. Now I feel like people do shit, but it's for the camera. Yes. And so it's a little bit different. Yeah. You know, we used to play this game called Hanging Brains. Oh, so, okay. So there'd be four of us and we'd walk into a bar with our nutsack out. Oh, you told me this story. And, and the person who, whose nuts were noticed last got free drinks. Right. And what we, what we learned early on is that no women noticed because there are no women who are looking at your nuts. The only dudes, the only people who noticed. Dudes. Yep. And it was dudes would walk up to you and go, hey, bro, your nuts are out. Yeah. And I'd be like, you, you don't think I know my nuts are out? Yeah. Why did you say it like that? Yeah. I know my nuts are out. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. But hanging brains was fun, but you couldn't do that. You can't do hang brains anymore because people get offended. Yeah. I mean, I could see where that might be. Not, not, but why? Not, it's part of the human body. Look, if a woman walked yeah. in with titties out, nobody would throw her in jail. Well, guys and women are probably a little different, but it's, it's, but, a, it's a double standard. It's, it is interesting, right? Because I think nuts are funny. So why not have nuts out? You yeah. know, maybe not the dick. I understand the dick because the dick feels like, like a, like an, like some sort of ancient mating. You just walk in with your dick out, you know, but nuts is funny. And especially the way we would do them. Man, if I did it today, I would dress them up. I would put like those Groucho Marx glasses googly, on. Googly eyes on Yeah, it. googly eyes. 
I might tuck a cigarette under my between my nutsack and my leg so it looked like my nuts were smoking a cigarette. I think there could be a really funny and tasteful way to do it. Maybe not tasteful. Might be the wrong word. On OnlyFans. I mean, yeah, I guess. I bet you there's somebody on OnlyFans dressing up their nuts. You don't think so? Uh, there's no funny OnlyFans? No. No. I, no, there isn't. I, let me ask you something. What's it going to take for you to go to OnlyFans? You said you were going to do it first. Yeah, but my toes aren't funny and they're not long. They don't look like tingers. You have toe fingers. You have the longest, well, thinnest. I do, I, I do on one side. On the left side, I don't anymore. I know, but this is what I'm saying, dude. We used to tell Jacob that we he looked he had little tingers that he could hang upside down by his toes on like a tree branch. No, you do have long toes. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. What what what's it going to take? To go totally fat. Tell me. Remember, you said it was you were going to do it. You were going to make a certain amount of money. And then once you did it, I was going to do it. Yeah, but why would I give up that money now if if I'm making money? Like, well, I want to know what your trepidation is. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It doesn't tickle my fancy, I guess. Okay. Well, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Not yeah, really you a, want not, your fancy not, tickled. Not really a feet guy, let alone my own feet, because I have four broken toes on two different feet. Yeah, but I'm saying, dude, but you don't have to be a feet guy. Neither am I. I actually don't understand. It's the, it's one of the main, because it's a probably pretty big sexual perversion. I think that's a big niche, right? Yeah. Not my thing at all. I don't uh, understand what makes them sexy. I don't. I don't either. I don't kink shame you. It can be into whatever you want. 100%. Other than if you're in defeat, then I shame you. No, I'm oh, just kidding. No, I, I don't shame you. you. Shame you is not the right word, but. But I'll tell question, you. About, the, question, for sure. I will tell you about the feet people. The feet people are, are, are aggressive. The other kinks or niches are not as aggressive. Feet people will straight up be like, let me see your fucking feet. You're like, whoa, my dick's out. I'm thinking about your feet. You're like, easy, dude. Yeah, relax. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah Put man. your dick away. Yeah. Let's have a conversation before that. I, not even before that. I don't, we don't have to have a conversation about your dick being out at all. Speaking of which, started to watch Baby Reindeer. You seen it? Uh, Iman has. I hadn't seen it yet. God damn. I'm like. Well, because when she told me about it, when it first came out, she started, like, she was like, you may not want to know what it's about. And I was like, well, just tell me. She was like, oh, you know, it's about a guy trying to get into stand-up comedy who ends up. You know, this and that. And I was like, I am not even a year in. Why did you tell me that? Like, yeah, that I mean, I, but. But I'm not in that position. I'm not. It's not even. It's not. I mean, the stand-up comedy is part of it, but it's. It, she just gave me like a, like a, a base of it. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Have you started Presumed Innocent? No, I don't have Apple TV. Do you want my passcode? Are you allowed to say that out loud? Apple, we're not giving away passcodes for free. Winky, winky. I'm also <laughs> going to use your Apple to watch Ted Lasso finally. Yeah, we can do that on the road. You don't want to watch Ted Lasso. Why not? I already watched Ted Lasso. The, the footy show? Dude, it's a great show. Oh, nice. Okay. Hey, listen, dude, it's not... I wouldn't watch a soccer documentary, documentary unless I wanted to go to sleep or possibly jump out a window. But I would watch... It's not about soccer. It's about this guy. I mean, who's the coach of an English football team? Yeah, but so what? I mean, like, Dexter was about a killer. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to go kill somebody. You know what I mean? Fair enough. There's soccer in it, but it's not. And I don't, I, I don't mind the soccer scenes because unlike real soccer, they're kind of, these scenes are exciting. And they're not 90 straight minutes. Yeah. It's kind of the highlights and exciting and there's action and fun. Not Drama. just, yeah, not just people kicking a ball around. Here's the deal. Live soccer, live hockey, tons of fun. On TV, those are not TV sports. No, neither is baseball though. No, neither is baseball. If we were going to rank going to see something live. See, I love baseball live. I do too. I There's do. something... Iman, like, Iman loves hockey. Hockey. Hockey just because it's so much better. You also can't tell how fast they're actually moving on TV. You get yeah. there and you see them how fast they're going. Yo, they're... Oh, move it. For Holy sure. crap. So like... I like... Like for me, the baseball, I just love going to a ballpark. Me too. Um, depending on who's playing a basketball game, it really just kind of depends on like like we were in last time we were at TD Garden. Yeah. Like, okay. We lost, but still, what a, an experience. Great. Um, hockey, I'm like, I've only been to a couple hockey games. I think it's a lot of fun. It's really fun to watch in person, even though I don't understand any of the rules. I just like watching them hit each other and fly around the ice. It's close to soccer rules. Yeah. I have yet to just figure out the layout of the yeah, ice yet. Yeah. Um, football, I mean, look. Better at home. 
But I, 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 come at me, everybody. I would disagree for this for only for college football nah. Saturday nights in Death Valley and Baton Rouge. Better it sitting in the stands is fun, but it's got nothing to do with the game. Yo, football is a TV sport, which is why it's the most popular sport. You can see the violence. Yeah. They slow mo it for you. They every angle. Yeah. It, it and it's just yo, dude. Because sometimes depending on your seat, you're really sometimes just seeing the back. They're driving down the field. It's not as, it's yeah. just not, not for me, for me, not, not, not. Fair enough. I, I, um, what's the best sporting event you think you've ever been to? Um, I mean, can you think of one that you, I, dude, I went to the, I'm trying to list them off. I was at game seven angels giants. Yeah. For the world series. I was at the Cam Newton uh, championship game. Yep. I watched Butler almost beat Duke. Gordon Hayward. At the, yep. You watched the Pats beat the... I watched the Pats beat the Seahawks. I think that's my favorite one. Because we were, we were on that goal line. Holy fuck, I have seen some amazing, amazing games. I had never listed them out like that. To me, those are, those are four... Of the greatest games, especially that Duke Butler game and the New England, who are we talking about? Yeah, that Seattle game, crazy. I, I don't know for me. I mean, look, I was at I was at LSU for Leonard Fournette's rookie season, so that Texas A and M game where he rushed for two hundred and fifty yards, yeah, threw two dudes over his shoulders. Um, I was there for one of Les Miles last season. We beat Florida on a fake field goal that same season. Yeah, um, I was at. Uh, I'm not a Laker fan, but, you know, respect. I, I was there for that Kobe game against the Raptors. Not the 81 points, but that one that Amy brought me to. Yeah. What do you mean, that Kobe game? That's not the 81 points. It was another game against the Raptors. Uh -huh. It was 2012. Uh -huh. And they were down. The Lakers were probably down 10 points. Kobe hit, I don't know, 10, 12 straight points for the Lakers. He hits a three on the, on the right on the right side, he gets an inbound, pump fakes, has three Raptors jump in front of him, and as they're all coming down, he hits a three in front of all of their faces, sends the game to overtime, scores, I think, 12 out of the 18 Lakers points in overtime, and with 10 seconds left, splits a double team and drives down the middle and puts the center on a poster for the game winner. Like, it's a game I remember so vividly, but like, I see highlights of it every now and then, and sometimes I see me and Amy in the crowd. Yeah, that's awesome. See the highlights. That's awesome. But like, that one was pretty amazing. I don't, I don't Can I tell you what else? I, actually, a game that I'm forgetting. Oh, and then the Celtics, the courtside. It wasn't yeah. like a great game, but courtside at TD. I think maybe for me, now that I'm thinking about it, if I'm just going pure emotional and pure one that meaningful, my, you know, during at my parents' 40th reunion, I got a box at Fenway. For the, for the family. And my grandfather was there. And he, my grandfather made gloves for the Boston Braves and like has gloves in the Hall of Fame. Right. And, and we were sitting in that box and he said, you know, I saw Babe Ruth pitch here. And I was like, pitch? Like that, it, it silenced the entire, because that's like saying, you know, yeah, I, I saw the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or me and Bigfoot had lunch. Yeah. To see, like, talking about Babe Ruth is is wild. It, yeah, dude, it's a it's he's at this point a mythical creature. Creature, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that might and just to be there with my entire family, including you, yeah, and, and watching was pretty amazing. I think Poppy's uh, jersey retirement was also pretty awesome. Yeah, I agree. Just, just for the sake of that moment, maybe not the Sox and them winning, but like that that moment. Um, my favorite sports moment ever is the Sox winning in two thousand four. And me and my brothers hugging in the living room. Yeah. And then me just wrapped around everybody else. Yeah. And we have that picture. And that, you can't see me. You can just see my little hand. Yeah. On the backside. Hey, but for me, that for me, that for me is my favorite sports memory. Just that. Now, before we get into anything else, dude, you got an Urban Dictionary term for me? Yeah, I do indeed. Um, Last week's one kind of fucked me up a little bit. The Alaskan Pipeline. I don't know if this one's going to be any better for you then. Okay. Hungry Unicorn. It, okay. I get five guesses. Five good guesses. Question, all right, questions. Is it sexual? Oh, yeah. Okay. Does it have to do with a penis? I mean, 
yes and no? I don't think so. No. Is it another condom situation? No. No, I'm at three. You can have a couple more. No, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, hungry unicorn. So there's, it has, to, it doesn't have to do with the penis. Huh? Technically in this definition, no. Okay. Um, well, hungry implies hole. Is there a hole involved? Yes. I should have asked. I should have been more specific. There's a bunch of holes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to narrow it down to two of the holes. Nah, three. Two. Well, two. I'm going to narrow it down to two of the holes. Okay, so I'm going to go either bu 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 front hole or back hole. Well, I mean, you only have one guess left. All right, right, right. I get a question and then my final guess. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, Okay. hungry unicorn. Hunger, I'm going to picture a unicorn. Penis, hole, hungry. This is th We would be terrible at $25,000 pyramid. I was going to say. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I'd be, ter okay, okay, okay. And do unicorns have wings? No, that's a Pegasus. Oh, unicorn is just the horn. Correct. Okay. All right. So I would go, okay, let me, last question. Yep. Okay. Are you stuffing something in somewhere? Y yes. It's part of the, it's part of it, yes. Okay. All right, here we go. A hungry unicorn is when you... Are you ready for this? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> a hungry unicorn is when you put a dildo on top of your head and you have sex with somebody like that. I am... Have you ever seen this before? Seen what? I'm stunned. You got that part correct of it. Oh, I did? You actually got that right. Like, I'm not even kidding. Is it, wait, wait, wait. For real? A uh, hungry unicorn. A gay sex position where one male puts a strap-on dildo on his head, sticks it up the other gentleman's ass while licking or sucking his balls. Whoa, that is a hungry unicorn. <laughs> By the way, the fact that you actually got that right... It's kind of scary. They should call it the greedy unicorn. I mean, can't you just, I mean, hungry is like, I don't he's know going for everything. Be, I, Matt, I don't know if I should be excited for him or disturbed that he actually got that Dude, right. Dude, you should be impressed. I was eliminating things because I figured the unicorn, there was a, there was something happening here. You did? You, but, but the licking of the nutsack is did, something that I. That was the hungry part of the unicorn. Yeah. That's what I was really trying to figure out. That was pretty good. Because, but, but yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Well done. Hungry Unicorn. I wonder who coined that first. Oh. You know? Who was like, hey, get back there. Let me be a Hungry Unicorn. Hungry Unicorn. All right. That's a good one, dude. I appreciate that one. Yeah, good guess. Yeah, thanks. Now, I will tell you last week, um, your videos that you brought in of that dude. Uh, Pujitsu? Pu doing Pujitsu. I... I'm embarrassed, but also I just want to admit I did attempt. I know you would. Yeah. So I tried to eat as much as I could. I ate a bunch of dates and figs and then, and just like some other stuff that I knew was going to make me a little gassy and I held them in and I'm going to tell you something right now. Here's what's impressive. I don't know how no poop came out. He must have to push like that. He must have done some sort of colon cleanse first. Where he was already kind of empty. Had to be completely empty. Yeah. There's just no human way to push like that. By the way, are you saying that you shit yourself yesterday trying this? I, it wasn't yesterday, and I'm not saying I did. Just not saying I didn't. Flip it. Yeah. I, I, all I'm saying is that it seems impossible to push that vigorously. Yeah. I would agree, though. I would agree. Especially when you're spreading your cheeks. I had to stop because I was like, oh, I'm about to shit yourself. Not just myself. When you're spreading your cheeks like that, you're, you're, you're sharing it with your friends. Yeah. So it's, it, it was pretty, um, oh, dude. Indiana Jones made a friend this morning. An actual friend? Yeah. He wanted to play with this dog so badly. I just, I, I I had to go, but we're going to meet up. This is a big Mastiff. Oh, perfect. 
And the Mastiff went submissive first, which was perfect. So Female? Male. Oh, interesting. With his nuts. Oh, interesting. Yep. And um, and I, that's why I was always avoided him. But this dog went straight submissive, which made... Indiana feel... He started fluttering. Have you... Did yeah, that little... Yeah, he... Yeah. He's like that. He's like that. You know, the dinosaur in the first Jurassic Park that kills Newman from Seinfeld. Oh, the the yeah, yeah, the yeah. one. He's like, okay, okay, yeah. He's like, move, stupid. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. But he started fluttering, and uh, yeah, it was great, man. I want to get him. A, I want to get him a buddy. He needs to have a buddy. He he so desperately wants a friend. Do not get a French bulldog. We're not getting a French bulldog. We're not getting a second dog right now. It's just can't do it. I travel too much. When we get everything uh, squared away as far yeah. as how much I'm going to be staying here, maybe we'll get another one, but we yeah. can't do it. I, I would love to. Yeah. Not going to lie. Yeah. You going to go throw up? Mm, one of those. Okay. I'm going to keep talking then. Uh, this is the first time that we've had to do this. Well, that, there was one time I had to just clear the butt. Oh. Yeah, but this time you're going to blow your butthole, which is a completely yeah. different situation. God, I mean, this is now, now you, now... You would see what this podcast would be like if it was just me talking. Although I feel like it's just been me talking most of this podcast. I mean, I could join you. Yeah, hey Matt. <laughs> uh, I, 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 um, yeah, he. I could tell he didn't feel well. He's been pretty quiet this entire show. I, I gotta say, uh, now that he's out of here, everybody, Jacob Wolf is getting so good at stand up comedy. Uh, it's so crazy. You guys have got to come out and check out the show. It, it's like, it'll be hard for you guys if you don't see a lot of stand up to judge it, but just a little bit over a year for what's been happening. I'm super proud of him. Um, he also shits a lot. And so maybe he thinks of his material in the bathroom. I got to tell you, I don't know if women do it too, but. But I think Beth thinks that I have stomach problems. I don't. I just, that's where I'm on my phone. I, I, I am on my phone more time-wise on the shitter than anywhere else. It, it, I don't know why. I just I've, It's comforting. And Beth's like, but you just go in there and you sit in it? I'm like, well, I, I mean, I flush. She goes, but you just sit in it? You don't want to come out on the couch and get on the phone? And I'm like, yeah, but once I leave the bathroom, I feel like I'm not being productive if I'm on my phone. So the bathroom is a perfect place for it. And she, yeah, but she keeps going back to, you just sit in it. And I don't sit in it. It's just, I sit around it. It No, it's it sits around me. That's all it is. But, but I, I tell you, Beth and I are, are not a couple that, I know some couples do, that poop in front of each other. We are, are not, that's not, I would maybe, I would be more apt to poop than wipe in front of her. But I, and, yo, dude, especially you dudes who stand up and wipe, I don't quite understand the stand wipers or the, the, the back to fronters. The back to fronters, I, straight up, this is true. If you, if you wipe back to front, and I have a friend who does, because we've had this conversation, you have d uh, dirty nuts. And so that would be my argument, number one, about front to back. I also want to say this about baby reindeer, since he's not here. I, there's so much good, there's so much good TV right now. It, it's just like the streaming services have really opened up the writers to be able to go a little darker, a little deeper, and breathe a little bit. Yo, the bear. Uh, although that's FX, the bear feels like a stream too, because they have scenes that, that otherwise I think streaming showed all the networks, there are different possibilities on how you can tell a story. So it's super cool. But have you seen baby reindeer? Um, I haven't, I know a little bit about it. Yeah. It's the stalking one, right? No. Yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, I watched the trailer for it. Yeah, and it just looked too creepy for me. I, I I gotta tell you, Beth said the same thing, and I don't find it creepy. 
I find some things cringy and I haven't got to the end yet. So maybe it'll get creepy. Um, I find some things cringy, but they're more about him than they are the stalker. And I, I guess also maybe I relate to the guy and his desperation. You know, he has so many co- comedian traits, you know, the people of mine or people that I know that I, I really empathize, sympathize with how he got himself in the situation, you know, the feelings of, of not being enough and want, needing that validation from somebody else is why a lot of us got into the business. Yeah, like Baby Reindeer is a Netflix show. Yes. But I think some of the best streaming stuff is on Apple TV right now. Yeah, I like it. Uh, Presumed Innocent is excellent. Mm-hmm. I watched Dark Matters. Dark Matter is a crazy movie. Did you show. Did you watch it? Um, I got two more episodes I got to watch, but I watched most of it. it. You know what I love about it? Um, everything actually. I, I, I usually am not like, although I started watching Sweet Tooth, I, I'm usually not like a sci-fi dude, you know, but this is legit great storytelling and not completely out of the realm of what I think could be possible. Well, it's interesting because it's based on a Blake Crouch novel. Yeah. Blake Crouch is the showrunner, writer, and director Oh, right. So you have a situation where the guy who created the story is actually the one making the TV show too. But it's the smartest way to go guys, because then the people who read it or like, if you give it to somebody else, sometimes they to take liberties and they're like, well, I don't like this part of the story. I'm going to, I'm going to make them Santa Claus. And you're like, that <laughs> kills the whole story. So the fact that they let this dude do that, I didn't research if the guy who created baby reindeer is the comic who it's about. I know it's based on a true story. Yeah. I know it is based on a true story too. It's it's, if you haven't seen it, you got to go see it. What I'm really looking for go though. And by the way, Oh, I forgot the, I forgot the email address for the show. Hey man, pod. Hey man with three A's pod. Yeah. No exclamation point. Correct. So Hey man, pod at gmail.com. Hey man, pod at gmail.com. I'm looking for comedies. That's the thing. Oh, I watched the, the latest Beverly Hills cop. Oh, I watched that last night. I, listen, Beth fucking hated it. But I'll tell you what, she... Oh, can I say something else? Yo, Kevin Bacon is this, in this. And when I start measuring people up, I'm like, whose career would I like to have? You know, and, and I used to put up Tom Cruise versus Brad Pitt. Like, who's had a better career, Cruise or Pitt? And I guess it depends on if you just want to be big action movie star, you want to do some indie stuff. And But I got to tell you this. I would throw Kevin Bacon in the mix for career because how many people get to start their career as the hero and end their career as the bad guy? He plays bad guys now. That's who he is. He plays kind of douchey dudes. You hear about that uh, social experiment he did? Where he went out as... As like a normal person? Yeah, I heard about it. How did it go for him? Uh, He lasted about two or three hours and he's like, I want to go back to being famous. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't blame him. See, he seems great because who, here's the thing. There are celebrities that people hate. Who hates Kevin Bacon? It's going to be great to be Kevin Bacon. You ever play the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon? I think I'm in there. I think I'm definitely Six Degrees from Kevin Bacon. But this is the thing. How many people, who's got a better career than Kevin Bacon? Who who starts at Footloose? Actually, not even Footloose. I think his first movie was, yeah, and then he was in Animal House. That was, I think, his first movie. No, I think uh, Friday the 13th was his first. Animal House was so far below before Friday the 13th. You could Google it. Animal House was 1975, and he had a scene in there where he said he was, it was the very end, everyone's panicking, and he's a police officer, and he's standing in the middle of the sidewalk, and he goes, no, please, nothing to see here, or something like that, and he gets run over. But Animal House was, a Friday the 13th, the first one, I remember seeing that, so that's got to be either very like 79 or 81, something around there. But Animal House is like 76 or 78, something like that. Right? All right. Friday the 13th is 1980. Let's look at Animal House. Animal House is before that. It's in the 70s. 
But guys, by the way, most of you listening, the 70s were um, a decade that happened in the United States. 1978. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, oh man. I saw Animal House in the Amherst Cinema. The Amherst Cinema is also the first place I saw my very first horror movie, The, Dawn, the Night of the Living Dead. It scared the shit out of me. I was supposed to go to a friend's house, uh, Julian DeRico. I was supposed to go to his house for a sleepover. And I lasted about three seconds and I started crying and I needed my mom and I went home. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I'll, Except I remember a bunch of times, I, I, the first overnight camp I went to, I, uh, uh, listen, the first overnight camp I went to, I cried for my mom and dad and the camp counselor had to take me out. And, uh, when I came back to go to sleep in my bed, my, my the people in my cabin had put pine needles in my, <laughs> in, in my bed and in my pillowcase, like just in case I didn't feel bad enough that they were like, yeah, we don't want your weeby ass in this, <laughs> in this cabin. But that overnight camp, I think maybe at 13 years old, 12 or 13 might've been the first time anybody had ever touched my ding ding over my pants. That was pretty great. So, uh, Jacob just texted me. He said that he's, uh, he's done for the day. Oh, is he not coming back? Yeah. I, I guess it's just, he's wreaking havoc caught, in there. Caught up with him. It's weird to get a text like that. <laughs> I mean, that it, it, how come he didn't text me? Oh, because I turned my phone off. Yeah. Probably cause you were talking. I turned my phone. Wow, he's done for the day, huh? Yeah, he just, he, he's not up to it. Yeah, okay, all right. Listen, I, I feel for him, man. Yeah, he just sent me, hey, might have to call it for myself. All right, buddy, no worries. And listen, I'm, we're at the end of our hour anyway, so we're good. I, I, I'll do the sign off. Um, uh, okay. First of all, and I, and I think I'm going to start a solo podcast, guys, um, it, that is going to be called Finding Me. I have done so much self-discovery over the last maybe three years. I feel like a different person. This isn't going to be some preachy. This isn't going to be me telling you how to live your life. This isn't going to be any of that. It's going to be because I've had a lot of people reach out to me. And I ask, and so I, I want to be able to share that with you. If you want to hear it, if you don't, then don't listen. I'm going to have other people on the podcast because I, I'm really curious about people who have come to the point where I am right now, where they actually feel good about themselves, not on social media, not, you know, uh, kind of feel good about them, but feel good about who they are. and how they finally got to that spot because I, I, there are some things that I did that I wish I had done 20 years ago that I knew were going to be good for me. I just wasn't ready to stop hating myself yet. And so I'm hoping to get people to that spot quicker than it took me, you know? And so I, I, I would love to, um, I would love to hop on a podcast, talk about just from beginning to where I am now and then start bringing people on who are also, and, and they don't necessarily have to be celebrities or some of them might be, um, or comedians. Some of them might be, I just think it's important for everyone to see that there are, there are people out here, um, who have figured out how to stop being self-destructive, to stop saying terrible things about yourself to stop thinking you don't deserve what you deserve. Um, and that's it. So I'm thinking about doing, I'm not thinking I am going to do one of those. Um, it's all this stuff. I, that stuff's going to start in the fall. Uh, I have a lot of, uh, exciting things coming up before then that I can't wait to share with you guys, but I'm going to put out the special in the fall too. I decided just to, um, jump over the summer cause just people are outside having a good time during the summer and they're not in here. Um, and that's it, everybody. The comedian Josh Wolf.com for tour dates in August. Um, we're out and about. We just have figured out, not figured out, finalized August 24th in Palm Springs at a place called the 420 Bank. Me, 
Jacob, uh, Dope is Yola, and Marty are doing like a full day comedy podcast mini festival. Uh, you're going to want to hop on those tickets fast. There's only going to be 500 available. And um, look, man, those are going to go about as fast as we put them up there. So I think they go up in two days. Um, and that's it, everybody. Uh, send in some emails. If you have um, any questions for us, hey man, pod, three A's, hey man, pod at gmail.com. We're going to do a, um, a pod where we answer your questions coming up in a few weeks. So get them in there. Um, I would prefer them to be mostly if you can, because I would love to start answering a bunch of these questions that we get in the meet and greets. We just don't have time to answer them. There's a lot of parenting questions from parents, a lot of kid questions from kids. And so we'd like to answer all those for you. Comedianjoshwolf.com for all the tour rates uh, at Josh Wolf Comedy um, on social media. I don't know his social media. Jake underscore Wolf. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. And maybe it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Yep. Boom. Guys, Jacob Wolf, if you were here, I would tell you I love you. I hope your butthole feels better. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. Later. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.